it it really allows <laughs> oh it's so fun to drive is the 997.2 a future classic is it the best daily driver for the money and is it the best balance of classic and modern let's take a look behind me i've got my 2011 porsche 911 carrera 4s with the aero kit i'm gonna go through all the different aspects of it we're gonna go on a drive and so that you can see is it the best balance of classic and modern is it the best daily driver and my personal favorite is it a future classic let's take a look let's first talk about the price of these cars so i looked on classic.com and the average price of a 997.2 is 49,000. my car is an s so i'm guessing it would go up a little bit and it also has the aero kit so i'm guessing it would go up a little bit however my car also has over a hundred thousand miles on it and i have put on about 85 of those hundred thousand miles so i've spent a lot of time in this car i live in southern california i've taken it to arizona i've taken it to las vegas i've gone up to san francisco i've gone to san diego i've done uh, stop and go traffic in los angeles for a long time and i just have to say that i really enjoyed this car and when you can think that you can get a reliable um, good looking Porsche 911 for under $50,000. I think that's pretty great. You know, when I went to go get this car, the 991 had just came out. And so I was like, ah, do I want the new one? Or do I want, you know, the, cause this one was an S I could afford an S and also the aero kit, or I could afford just a new Carrera. And so I went with the older one. And I'm really happy that I went with this 997. One of the things that is great about this car is that it's naturally aspirated. And, you know, in the 991, I can't remember, I think it was the 991.2 when they went to all turbo. And, you know, that's great, it's faster, but for me, I love the naturally aspirated engine. This car has 385 horsepower and goes zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. And, it's a classic, you know? This just got inducted to Porsche Classic. It's a 2011, so it is more than 10 years old. So now Porsche Classic is dealing with this. Thinking about a classic car that has 385 horsepower, naturally aspirated engine, 4.1, zero to 60, that's pretty fun. Let's talk about the looks of this car. I really like the 997.2, it has the, the sleeker lights in the back than the 996, but it also has a very classic look. It has the friendly lights that everybody loves about a 911, you know, something that people didn't like in the 996, or my personal opinion that I wasn't a big fan of the 993, but what's interesting is I like these, but when I look side by side, the 993 has similar lights to the 997 in the sense that they're, they're more sloped back. What I love about this car too, because it is the 4S, is that it has those wider hips. I've always been a fan of the wider hips in, in Porsches, especially in the water-cooled, um, in the water-cooled cars. You know, I, I'm okay with the, the narrower hips on the more classic cars. I, I've actually come to really love those, those, those early, um narrow cars but this car just streams 911 i mean everybody knows what it is it looks modern but also classic at the same time you know in my case i've got the aero kit so it has a little more of a race look to it i've even had people come up to me at a gas station and go oh i love your gt3 because when i got the car it actually uh, was debadged that's how it came from the factory and you know i felt very good like oh yeah i love my gt3 too but it's not a gt3 unfortunately so you get the people that may not may not know all the different types of cars and that's how i was i think early on as a kid i didn't know necessarily all the ins and outs of what 
the looks of the car, you know, made a GT3 or a turbo. And now I know all that stuff, but this car looks mean. It looks classic and it looks quintessential 911. So this car came with 19s and these are actually turbo wheels, fairly wide tires. You've got a 305 in the back and I think it looks nice. It's fills the wheel well. Do I have some wheel gap? Yes, I do. But this is why I'm doing this video because on a daily driver, wheel gap versus not scraping, not having to go around things. Do I still scrape every once in a while? Yes, because I do have the aero kit, but most of the time I don't. And I can drive this car around town and really just enjoy it. The, the wheels look great. They function well, although driving around LA, I've gotten a lot of nails. You know, you have a wider, you have a wider tire. You have a lot more uh, surface area to catch those nails. But overall, the wheels are great. The tires are nice and the brakes work really well. I really love these lights. I think they're a good balance of being big enough but not being clunky, like maybe in my opinion, some of the early 997s and 996s were. I think that this is sleek, but also it just has, it just has a great look. I don't know how to, how to describe it. I usually don't like the taillights that are all clear, like some of the 991s have. I think it maybe is the GTSs, but I could be wrong. I just think that it, it looks nice, especially on a white car with the red and the white, that um, I'm happy with this. So one of the special things that I like about my car is that it does have the aero kit on it. I really like the difference with the aero kit versus the stock front valence here. I think it gives it a meaner look. I think it gives it a racy look. In addition, I have added these uh, grates here from Renline. Before I did that, I did get a lot of leaves and cigarette butts and bees and a bunch of stuff caught in there. It was really difficult to clean it out. I also had a friend that scared me and hit a bird and his radiator blew up and it cost him a bunch of money. So at my last service, I had my mechanic put in these, these, um, these grates from Renline. The front lights. Uh, and the backlights too, but the lights work really well. And this is something that, you know, you kind of take for granted unless you have classic cars like I do. And sometimes the lights don't work very well. We've got really nice lights. They light up the street safety and also just look really nice. They're the bright white, which I tend to like for newer cars, but um, not for old classic cars. Classic cars, I love that yellow, like, 3,500 Kelvins, newer cars, you know, it's 5,000, uh, 5,500 Kelvins, and they work really well, and they look really nice. I mean, these lights are one of the things that made 911s so iconic, and they've been able to continue that, you know, maybe they had a little hiccup with the 996. I've come to really like the 996s, learning that they came from the 917. I never knew that, but now I think it's really cool actually that they brought that in. You know, the, I think they had some pushback from the 996 and went back to the classic kind of frog friendly headlights. And um, I think they did a really good job. The interior of this car is great. It feels racy, it feels modern. There's not too many screens. I think it's, it's again, at a really nice balance of modern but classic, right? That, that analog but modern luxuries. So I love that, you know, for a daily driver, I can adjust the volume on my steering wheel. I love that I can take calls very simply and still stay connected. I think that the dash is classic looking, but a new take on it, you know, especially compared to uh, my air-cooled 911. It's a little more scrunched together. My car has the PDK. And when I first got this, I didn't know how I was gonna like it. I had always driven a stick, uh, you know, for, for many, many years. And when I got it, I kind of felt like a sellout, <laughs> to be honest with you. But 
this shifts so nicely. I mean, it's so smooth. And especially when you're in Los Angeles traffic or you're in any kind of traffic, you don't want to be shifting all the time. I mean, when I take my, my Targa up to LA, it's fun, but sometimes it gets annoying shifting and shifting. So for a daily driver, having a PDK, I think is really nice. It's fast, it's easy, you can kind of relax. And again, it's just a great balance of modern uh, and classic at the same time. Modern, but not too modern. Let's talk about the size of this car. From the 997.2 to the 991, it's only about two inches shorter and about two inches uh, thinner. The wheelbase on this car is actually four inches shorter than the 991, which I didn't know. This car, I think, is the perfect balance of a modern car size before the 911s got too big. Now, don't get me wrong. I love 991s, I love 992s, but I think this is a nice balance, and especially for size uh, that you can fit things in. Like, just yesterday, I had two humans, a bulldog, and a surfboard in the car, but it keeps the inside big enough, but the outside doesn't get too bulbous or too large. And again, don't get me wrong, I love all 911s, but I think that the 997.2 had a really good balance. Something I love about modern 911s is people that don't know 911, Porsche, you know, 997, 996, 991, 992, they have no idea. And so I will go somewhere and someone will say, oh, nice car. And you know, it always makes me feel good. I, I'm passionate about these, as you can tell. And they're like, is it new? And I'm like, uh, no, it's 12 years old. They're like, what? They're like, yeah, it's 12 years old. They're like, wow, that looks amazing. The, the 911 is such a classic look. It's so iconic that it never goes out of style. And even a 997 that mine, you know, was uh, a 2011, so it was probably sold in 2010. It's 12 years old and it still looks modern. It still looks cool. I still have kids, you know, look at me as I go by. I still get, get looks uh, from people recognizing that it's a nice looking car. And that doesn't happen with very many cars. Now it does happen with 911s and almost any 911 will get a look. But I think, again, this car has classic looks that don't go out of style. And it's cool when people think, you know, maybe you just spent $200,000 on a car and it's a $50,000 car. I love the reliability on this car. I have had no problems. I mean, no problems. And the car has over 100,000 miles on it. Do I get it serviced regularly? Yes. Do I change the oil regularly? Yes. But this is a car that you can get in, turn the key, it's going to start, and you can go where you're going to go. And for someone who is commuting, this is important. And especially if you have a job that you can't be late to, you know, if you work for someone else, or if you have, you know, uh, clients or patients or someone waiting for you, you get in a car like this and it starts. And that, you know, it kind of probably sounds silly for people that drive modern cars, but if you've been driving classic cars, that's not always the case. And I have put on, there's 100,000 miles on this car. It is rock solid and I don't baby it. I go fast and I hit the brakes hard and I do this and that. Now, have I had to change the brakes? Of course, yeah, you know, I do regular service. But these cars, if you service them well, they'll go forever. And I'm always trying to see who has the highest, the highest mileage on a 997.2. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm sure that this car is going to go hundreds of thousands of miles. This was my first Porsche, so I plan to never sell it. And I hope that this is a car that I can do 300, 400,000 miles on. I really hope that that's where it goes. And I'm not worried. I actually think that's gonna happen.
What I love about this car is that I can get in and I can go. And I know that I'm gonna get there. Now, my classic 911, that I can actually do the same thing with that, but I know that for many classic 911s, this is not something you can really rely on. This car, it handles so well around the corners. You know, we've got 385 horsepower. It's got a great sound. And actually, I've taken this car to the track. We tried to get the track wet, and we we're trying to get the the rear end loose. And with the four-wheel drive, even with uh, my PASM off, we still couldn't get the rear end loose. Now, for those that you know really want to use oversteer in their driving, the 4S probably isn't for you. But if you want a car that you basically like can't lose control of, you know, if you're a, a, an okay driver, I guess. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an amazing driver, but I'm okay. This car, you can do, you know, you can feel very safe in it. Now, from a usability standpoint, the AC works. I have heated seats. I have comfortable seats. I have three-point seat belts in the back for my kids. You know, I have um, all the modern luxuries that I'd like to have. Like Bluetooth and, you know, radio that works and speakers that, that function well. So I think for me, it is just such a perfect balance of classic and of modern and is really a great daily driver. And I daily drove this car for many years. I mean, for, I don't know, eight years or something. And it's great. I really, really think that these 997s could be a future classic. Here we go. And look at that. Zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. I mean, this car is fast. Fast, you know, even by modern standards, it's relatively fast. 385 doesn't sound like a ton when you talk about cars now having 600, 700, 800 horsepower, especially with you know, electric electric motors. But this car's fast. I remember when I first got in this car at the dealership, and I was like, "Holy moly! I've never driven a car this fast." Now you get used to that quickness. You get used to it and you want more and you want more and you want more, which, you know, I don't know if anybody ever has enough. I think we're getting to a point now where cars are about as fast as you can go when you're talking about 2.9, three seconds, you know, pretty soon the human brain won't be able to handle that. But I just think it's a great daily driver. It looks great and it may just be the best modern 911 for the money that has that analog feel and that modern feel. The interior is great when you're driving. The, the steering wheel has a really thick grip that I like. I can do almost everything I want to do from, from shifting if I want to, if I want to shift manually or turning up my volume or, or answering a phone call. Everything is right here. It feels very 911, I mean, of course. But when you go to, that's one thing that I really love about every 911 is any 911 that I get in, whether it's, you know, from the 60s to today, I kind of know where everything is. You know, maybe not the 992s, they're, they're a little screen heavy for me. But before the 992s and 991s, I get in, you're in a great, a great driving position, you have everything where you need it to go, and it feels very normal for any 911 owner. This car has a great duality about it, and that comes with the Sport Plus, or the Sport button, actually the Sport Plus I rarely use, Sport button, and the Exhaust button. 
So, you know, let's say you're pulling out of your driveway and you're in the neighborhood and it's early and you don't want to wake up your neighbors. You can bring this car out in regular drive mode, not put on the exhaust button. And then, you know, you get to a point of where you want to open it up and you throw on Sport Plus and your exhaust button and this car goes. I mean, the car is fast. Here we go right now. I mean, I still get a head rush when I do that. It's fast enough that I get a head rush and that was going from a rolling start. It's even better when you go from stopping. <laughs> uh, you know, this car is 12 years old. It still makes me smile. It still gives me a head rush like that if I want to go fast. It's just a, it's just a joy to drive. You've heard me mention this in some of my other videos, but I'm always surprised on the headroom of 911s because this isn't the case for all sports cars. I'm 6'1", I'm not terribly tall, but I'm relatively tall, and I fit in these cars with no problem. My dad, who's 6'4", fits in his classic 911, but this, you know, I've even got I probably have four inches and you know my seat's not all the way down on the ground it's really comfortable for tall people my wife is tall as well I kind of come from a tall family so it it really allows <laughs> oh, it's so fun to drive it really uh, allows a comfortable seating position driving position and you know you're not crammed in some of these sports cars like you've seen i've seen tall people try to fit into you know certain ferraris and, and it's difficult but 911 it's so dainty still has so much room in the interior let's go around some corners here say how much I love this car and I hope that you guys like this review. Is the 997.2 a future classic? Is it the perfect balance of modern and analog? Make sure you comment down below and let me know what you think.